So you just got started with your kettlebell journey as a beginner, awesome, I am rooting for you and I got something for you. Check the first link in the description, it is our free 30 day kettlebell workout course that you can sign up right now. Click the link, sign up and enjoy. <laughs> Grüezi Vitrant, Gregory von Lebestag here. Mistake number one happens in the hand-to-hand -hand swing. Beginners start using their arms too much instead of using their hips and then it looks a little bit something like this. It's too stiff and it's not really fluid and at the end of the day, your forearms give out very quickly. You want to remedy this by using your hips and we call this the so-called arm body connection. Watch as the kettlebell drops, I keeping my arms loose and I want to reconnect my arm to my body as soon as possible. I want to keep that connection as long as possible and then whew, I'm using my hips to move the weight instead of using my arms. Mistake number two happens in the double-handed swing. We also call it heart style swing where we use heavier weights and we need more tension. So what I see beginners do is they lack tension throughout the movement. The proper setup isn't there and then they do something like this because they lack tension throughout the whole exercise. The solution is having a great setup where there's already tension and when I'm on top I use as much explosiveness as possible. Intent matters. Thinking about exploding the kettlebell from the backswing to the top. Mistake number three happens in the clean, the crash landing. Beginners clean the weight up and boom, it always crash lands on your wrist, boom, on your forearm or even on your shoulder. Remedy this by thinking about spearing the kettlebell and keeping your elbow as well as the kettlebell a little bit closer to your body. Don't have a huge arch where you bring the kettlebell up like this, but you try to keep it a little bit closer. And what you really want to avoid in order to remedy the crash landing is using a wrist guard or a wristband because this teaches your body that form can stay the same, that the crash landing can always happen and your wrist guard takes care of the problem. That way you always avoid improving your form. Mistake number four is crash landing the kettlebell, boom, in the snatch and then boom, again having the same problem that you are already experiencing in the clean. The snatch is the logical progression from the clean. So whatever mistakes you have in the clean, you automatically transfer it to the snatch. So it's the same solution. You want to spear the kettlebell, but not on hip level or shoulder level, depending on your perspective, but overhead. So what I want to do is I want to really bring my full hand inside the kettlebell window. This is the kettlebell window and I want to spear the kettlebell just like in the clean, I want to spear the kettlebell overhead. And again, another important principle applies and that is do not use a huge arch, but try to keep the kettlebell a little bit closer to your body. Mistake number five happens in the goblet squat and that is leaning forward as we go down into the bottom position. And then we come up, we do this, pushing the hips back and then come up. We call this right here, we call this the stripper squat. And you want to avoid this. Now, to remedy this problem, bring the kettlebell up, stand a, li a little bit wider than shoulder width apart. Now hinge a little bit and then press your knees out as far out as you can so that your hips have enough space and your upper body can stay upright and as you go up think about tensing your full body and your body comes up in unity not just the lower body first and then the upper body second mistake number six probably one of the most common ones is deadlifting with a rounded back especially in the lower part of your spine and then it looks a little bit something like this 
we come back up and then we think about rounding the spine and completely ignoring your strongest muscles which are your hips here's the solution shoulder width stands over the kettlebell use your hips keep your spine straight and now instead of using your spine to lift the weight up we use our hips the strongest muscles and if we learn how to deadlift we learn how to lift stuff properly with our legs we can avoid a lot of back problems number seven another common one and it's not easy to fix it takes some time and that is in the press as we rack the weight beginners tend to flare their elbows out when they go into the top fixation and the same when they bring the kettlebell back down is the elbows flare out again what we want to focus on is keep your elbow close to your body and bring it up in a straight line and if you want to bring the weight back down the same thing you push the elbows forward now your shoulder has to do some work and then you re-rack the weight think about pressing the handles up first i can show you a little bit up close and that is if you flare your elbows out like this you see the kettlebells higher than the handle and this might cause trouble for your shoulder but if i press the handle up first as you can see the handle's not how, higher than the bell this is the way to press a kettlebell and this takes some time to get used to because it's a different way or we press the kettlebell differently than let's say a dumbbell or a barbell number eight happens in the turkish get up and there's a host of mistakes that you can make but what i see most of the time people do is not understanding how to shift their body weight so let me just go down real quick so i can show it to you so as we are on the floor i press the weight up beginners think that they have to come up like this and then not really shifting anything or not really shifting body weight to get the most leverage out of it so watch me demonstrate it again as i go down so now i am now shifting my body weight over my hips i have a safe back now and now it's on my hand now i come forward i shift the whole body weight on my elbow now here's the crucial part i use my right leg that's now connected to the floor and i press it out or i place it a little bit away from me so now i have leverage on my right leg which can help me to come back down on my back and as i come up especially as the weight gets heavier now i have to shift my whole body weight to my elbow again i'm using my stabilizing leg that is on the floor and watch me shift my whole body weight to the elbow and from this position shifting on the hands bringing the hips up shifting the whole body weight again on my hips and then i can stand up and get the most bang for my buck out of this powerful exercise number nine beginners get it confused with the different styles in kettlebell training and i would recommend you at least as you are beginning in order to not get it confused to take the no style approach you either engage with a kettlebell into high tension for example a heavy kettlebell double-handed high tension heavy swings for a couple of reps that leave you gassed immediately but you go with intent and explosiveness behind it a lot of tension or for example a high volume snatch where the idea is just to keep the whole thing going use more an efficient way to work with the kettlebell in order to work not on your explosiveness in that regard but on your strength endurance it's actually the same thing as you would handle any other training modality and that is intent and goals matter do i want to build my explosiveness use high tension exercises 
do I want to build my strength endurance? Use high volume exercises. Mistake number 10 happens in the jerk. And that is treating the second dip, this one, like a mini squat. And then it looks a little bit something like this. That's not the idea. The solution is to let gravity do its thing, to not engage any type of muscular tension as you drop your whole body weight back on your full feet or in, on the heels in that regard after finishing the launch portion of the jerk. It looks like this. And that's what gives this significant cue, audio cue, from my heels, but I don't slam them into the floor. I just drop the whole weight under the bell. So thank you for watching. If you liked the video, like it. Consider subscribing, and I'll catch you on the next one. If you're looking for kettlebell courses that can help you lose weight, build muscle, and improve your kettlebell technique, then check out the Laborstock Academy. Let us help you discover a new perspective on kettlebell training, making it simple and easy for you to understand. Join the waiting list of your desired course now and secure your spot when it's open for enrollment. Link is in the description.